Hello everyone, we're back with some more Ark Nova replay analysis. This is number 9. We've got two games to go over today. The first one is from our friend Yadi. Uh, how's he ranked currently? Currently number 3, but we know he's in... Well, he's, he's in the top 3 players in the world. Arena season... Uh, arena winner last season. Very strong player. Uh, and we're on Observation Tower today, uh, same as the second game, which is another four-play game from Tom Waki. Also on Observation Tower, he made he actually left a comment on the last video saying he thinks Observation Tower gets a lot of undeserved hate, and that might be a four, that might be like a more two-player thing. But he does like this map, and he and he sent through this replay to sort of show off how strong it can be. But we're going to start with the two-player one, and I'll set up the chat, and then we'll uh, we'll go. And remind me to go full screen for the next game. Okay, Observation Tower. Uh, EAD is the first player. Robert saying he watched my game against BDW earlier this week. Um, yeah, we were in a voice call at the time during that game. It was just a, just a training mode game and it did not go very well for me. So I won't be reviewing that one. <laughs> but yes, it was very funny. So observation tower, first player goals are small animals who are in architectural zoo. We see a sort of mini combo here. We got was a small animal and expert in small animals and the small animal end game goal. So I have watched this and he does decide to go for this. Um, it's like an obvious combo, but it's one that I'm still not sure I'd pick. Like I, I'm not sure I'd be brave enough to pick it, honestly. Uh, I just don't really like playing the small animal style, but we're going to see how he does it. To go with these two picks, they are herbivores as one of the projects. So Meerkat Den is a good choice for that. And then just to go with it, the mountain to appear is a herbivore and it's also a small animal. So just very combo opening hand. It's a bit sad to get rid of release of patents, but you can only start with four cards and those are the starting four. One of the things that we need to note is both of these cards require three reputation. Uh, and it's going to be hard to play all these sponsors very early on. So we're going to see how he works around that as well. First move is to build a size to enclosure on the reputation. That's one way of ensuring you can play these cards. Uh, just get the reputation, then get either of those two unis, even though YD does have like uh, first dibs on the uni because his association is higher and he's the first player. Opponent just building a size 2 in a very weird spot, I would say. Uh, generally, you want to be connecting to the tower. You'd need a really good reason not to. I'm not sure 5 money is a good enough reason this early, but we'll see what the opponent's plan is. Uh, starting with Expert in Small Animals. This is a card that you'd ideally like to play later, when you already have some small animals out to get the tickets from it, but just have to play these sponsors and playing it before associating makes sense and it's going to make the animals cheaper opponent starts with a europe partner zoo and we do have europe as one of the other uh, base conservation projects next is cards because no, no reason to associate when you only have one worker especially when your opponent's already done their action you can just take it whenever you want and taking away the hypnosis snake not a bad idea. Um, possibly reading that the opponent wants to build a size 1 enclosure next to the tower and get the uh, the adder and hypnotize. So a little bit of a denial pick, but it is also a small animal that's playable, so... The opponent snaps up expert in large animals. We could be seeing the uh, polar opposite games, game plans right now. And just going with the hand size because... That's the three reputation needed for these two sponsors anyway. 
opponent now plays expert in large animals. Some very suspicious things going on on the other side of the board. But this move is just completely wild, and I don't know if it's out of nowhere, but if I was looking at all the moves that I thought would happen, this would be the least likely. Firstly, let's talk about the positioning of the petting zoo. What the hell is up with that? It's, uh, it's so you can cover the card draw and get the rabbit. And I mean, with this small animal game plan, petting zoo is a good idea. It's just not what I expected. Secret petting zoo. We're about to see how much of a petting zoo lover he really is. Opponent building a size 1 enclosure. Well, we know that they don't have the adder. Okay, time to play animals. And this was another interesting move to me, only playing the rabbit. This is also because... I guess the idea is, with Meerkat Den, you want to maximize it as much as possible. So if you're playing the Tapir before the Meerkat Den, it's very sad. And there's really not much of a rush to play the Tapir, because it only actually gives one more appeal, meaning like basically one more income early on. So the Rabbit's just as good to play early. But that was another move that surprised me the first time I was looking through the match. Opponent plays a Porcupine... So they're up to two Europe now. They just they did they dig away some small animals, which is not a bad idea, and they play a stoat. So they're up to three Europe all of a sudden. They are making good progress on this, and there's also expert on Europe and the European bison just in the display. You were thinking of putting animals back for an X inst instead of the rabbit. I still like the rabbit play. I mean, surely playing an animal is better than just getting an X token this early on. It's like three more income, right? Meerkat Den gets played, giving some more income and also covering the five money. Really good placement there. I like that. The opponent X's out associate. Hmm. Yes, obviously you want to be playing more than one animal at a time, but... Yeah, opponent associates really not one of the things that you want to be Xing out. I guess if you're going to do it, it's better to do it early. But generally, you want to associate high when there is a break, so you can get your second partner zoo or uni or supporter project and then upgrade your other cards, so you can do better actions at the start of the next break. And this was a tough call, I think. Do you snap up the European Bison or the Expert on, on Europe? So the Bison gives the two Europe uh, icons that the opponent needs to get to five. And they do have surplus money to play it. But Expert on Europe sort of works out that the timing of it works out better because the opponent has cards and then sponsors, like one after the other. So Yeti decides to take Expert on Europe away. And this could even be playable for himself, because you could still potentially go for Europe 4. Uh, it works out with, with all these small animal plans, like needing the size 1 enclosures could be useful. <laughs> Opponent snaps up the European Bison, which is not really surprising at all. And I think causing a break here is fine. Yeah, I mean, you, you could build, but you'd rather build as upgraded before you do any building, especially with all the like, small animals that you want to be playing. So it's fine. Don't, don't be scared to cause the break, people. And we're going to see a trend appear, and look at how many good cards are in this display right now. You got one of the best sponsors in the game. You got one of the best animals in the game. You got also pretty two, two pretty decent animals down here. Opponent builds a size five enclosure for their bison. Positioning is obviously not ideal. Uh, I'm not really sure where else you'd put it without build being upgraded. 
And the thing is, they do want to play the Bison and then support Europe at five. So, I mean, I guess if there was going to be a f- forgivable time to put a size, uh, put an enclosure over two of the same tower spaces, this would this would be it. Okay, second uni, very normal move. Upgrade two cards. And this kind of surprised me as well, upgrading cards and sponsors. Sponsors I kind of get. Well, sorry, cards I get because of how good this display is. Like, you just want to take everything from here. You want to draw everything from range. Sponsors, I guess, because there are a lot of sponsors that want to get played pretty soon. I guess Waza can wait. But obviously Federal Grants is one that you want to play soon. Ah, yeah, but the opponent's going to take Federal Grants away with this Bison because it takes uh, all sponsors away, which is good timing for them. (laughs) We have the Macaw up here, which is another top-tier animal. Taking cards now. To snap up the Sun Bear. He really, really rates the Sun Bear. <laughs> ah, so Yadi told me before I started reviewing this game that he made a huge mistake somewhere. And he's saying that he actually thought he had the European Bison in his own hand. Opponent plays the federal grants that it's got. We also see that a rhino appears now. Just another amazing card here. Uh, was this live or turn based? I, I don't want to. Ch- I don't want to check and spoil the results. So you can tell us in the chat. Was it live or turn based? I, f- I actually forget. Opponent now supports Europe at 5. This is extremely early. This was a live game. Okay. Ah, so I didn't even talk about the uh, CP rewards, but there was partners and universities. So, I mean, when you're getting to 5, you're getting something good. It's not that important to rush it. I mean, it's still obviously good too. But it's not like there's a partner zoo over here and then a university over here. So at least you're getting something good no matter if you're first or second. I don't particularly like the move to upgrade association this early by them. Uh, They take a second worker, which is fine because they have like no reputation. So they're a long way from getting another worker. So taking a worker is fine. I probably would have upgraded animals to help with the reputation or even cards because of how good this... Okay, cards doesn't do much because their reputation sucks. Okay, there's still there's still a mistake coming up. Everyone keep your eyes peeled. Playing Waza now is uh okay, I guess. You don't you don't you don't really want to play expert on Europe right now. I think with expert on Europe you want to play it a bit later so you can get more tickets from it. Waza, you, you want to play it later as well to get more money from it. Opponent snaps up the Rhino, which I think is a good move. Uh, the thing about these projects is they're kind of hard to support. Europe is normally hard to support, but they've already done that. They've already got two herbivores ready. Primates is very hard to get to five now that they've already played like a lot of European animals. They, they don't synergize at all. There are no European primates. So having a Rhino is good just for something else to support. We see the Cobra appear now, which is another amazing animal. And it's card drawing time. It's going to snap up the Cobra instantly. And now side entrance appears, just on our trend of these overpowered cards showing up one after the other. Pretty insane. Okay, opponents building with their upgraded build action. Just a bit of everything. Yeah, 
if we look at the um, points and income difference, well, let, let's look after the animals played. <laughs> okay, good time for the Tapir. Let's uh, get rid of some of these good cards. Get rid of side entrance, get rid of the Macaw. I think that's that's a good decision. But yeah, this Tapir is giving good points because of Meerkat Den. And the actually the underrated thing about Waza that I don't think about often is that it, it, it just lets you snap up another small animal. Because so that's extremely useful. Opponent X's out animals. Um, I don't really like that move either. I think, I don't know what sponsors they have in their hand, but I would just be looking to cause the break. The thing is, when you have a point lead and income lead like this, you just want to accelerate the game. So maybe they could look at spending their, spending their worker and then causing the break. Maybe that's what they plan to do, actually. But we can see that Yeti triggers the break. Uh, and yeah, there, uh, this is a good time to trigger the break right before the opponent uses their worker. We have another petting zoo animal here. Okay, opponent spending an X token to get into herbivores before, before us, I think. That's a good move. Both players are sort of... They're both sitting at two. They both like to support it. Was it possible to snap the Taipan? Uh, yes. It was definitely possible to. Uh, I just don't really see a reason to. The awkward thing about the Taipan is the, uh, the Australia requirement. I don't think causing the break was a mistake. Multiplier on uh, on sponsors is really that's like that's telling us that they have sponsors that they want to play. I mean, I th I think in their position it, it could also be cool to like double cause the break. That would be good while you have an income lead as well. Uh, this is pretty sad right now, using Association at 5 to get a partner zoo. Ideally, it would have been two herbivores, but just lost out on one, one tempo to that. Yeah, also, yeah, I'm not a fan of this from the opponent. They're drawing cards here, which implies that they want another sponsor to play. But I think if you don't have two sponsors that you want to play, it's a little bit suspicious to put the times two on sponsors in the first place. What that okay, this is this is very sad, but I think what the opponent's doing is stuffing around a bit too much. They have a big point lead, they have an income lead, they should just be accelerating the game as much as possible. And yeah, you never ever want to spend a five build action to build a size one enclosure. So this is where Expert on Europe could have come in hand earlier. Maybe we actually do want these size 1 enclosures. Opponents building again before they play sponsors. Uh, it's possible that they need the X token to play a strength 6 sponsor. Uh, and the, the uh, good thing about Waza is you don't actually need to have animals at 5 to play animals. Because you can just play one and then, because it's the only small animal you've played, you can play another and then still snap up a card. And this is a perfect time to hypnotize. Just bullying the opponent, bullying their association down. So one target you want to hit is when their association is at three for maximum hypnosis value. Doesn't even have a worker, but just Xing it down hurts their tempo a lot which is a big reason, like a big part of this comeback. Now if we look all of a sudden, like the opponent's still 10 points ahead, there's still a bit of income ahead, but it's a lot closer than it was a few minutes ago. Opponent Xing out cards now. I don't, I don't really know what their plan with the sponsors was, but I think Yadi rightly causes the break even spending 3x tokens to do it. 
it's not a waste because you're costing your opponent a t a, like a double action as well as just getting a ton of money from doing this, which is going to help with the income difference. So that's a great tactical move, and the opponent should have been more aware of that. They have to discard three cards as well. We have uh, plenty of petting zoo animals on the board now. Opponent, I didn't even notice the opponent actually took snap with their second reward. So they snap up expert and herbivores, which I think's a little bit of a dud pick. So one thing, uh, it's it's okay because it's denying a herbivore symbol to AD. But the money's not really an issue now. The income's sort of at the stage where it's high enough that like three or six money isn't from one sponsor is not going to make a huge difference. And they play it now. It just seems more like a, a wasted move than a productive move. Okay, we have a lot of card draws, drawing everything. And this is a lot of sponsors, and Geologist actually dies. I wasn't really happy when I saw this. I think Geologist, when you already have this many rock icons, is like a slam dunk to keep. Especially on this map, when you're already going to connect to them all anyway. But apparently every single card here, he rates higher than Geologist. But also, there's sort of a backlog of sponsors. Personally, I would have kept Geologist over Expert on Europe. Do we see Diversity Researcher? He's just drawn it from range for a reason. I think we will see it. Okay, opponent takes their first uni. Yeah. So even though they are ahead in points and income, uh, they're a little bit behind on upgrades and reputation. We have another five association for a partner zoo. Okay, opponent plays another herbivore, which is fine. They like it's better value because they're getting some money back from it, but it's not really contributing to any project. Uh, and they weren't paying attention. If they were paying attention, they should realize that we have all three petting zoo animals required already. So getting rid of the sheep does nothing. Getting rid of the low mountain range is a smart idea, though. It's just a, a dangerous card in general. Building right now before animals, uh, yes. You could play both petting zoo animals, but the thing is we also want to play native lizards before before we uh, reach 25 appeal. So just connecting to the rocks here. Connecting to most of them. It's, it's fine. Opponent plays a bird aviary. Uh, that is a good spot for it. Touching rock and water, get some a reputation here. They still have the Rhino, which I would be looking to play reasonably soon for them. They could potentially, they, they're pretty close to habitat. It was the Indian Rhino, right? So as soon as they get an Australia animal, they have five habitats. Uh, and yes, like we said, playing native lizards before the, before 25 appeal. So, one of the things that I've gotten better at is sort of all these, like, play under 25 sponsors, you should really look to maximize them. 8 appeal is a huge amount from one card. Now, you can ignore, like, the end game scoring, but it's such a huge tempo boost. If we look at the positions now, now still a 10-point lead, but Yadi has a 30 money lead. So I'd say it's pretty much dead even now. And the opponent's spending money donating way too early. So their income is actually not high enough for the rest of the game. And they're sort of throwing it away on things that aren't giving them income. And there's no rush to, uh, to hit 10 here and make your opponent discard a scoring card. 
We can see that obviously small animal zoo is kept. We're well on our way to that. And now drawing cards before animals is a little bit risky. The opponent can cause the break. And the thing is, if they cause the break, there's going to be a lot of discarding here. So if I'm going to guess that there's a mistake in the game, this is it. I would 100% be playing animals before your opponent can cause the break. They don't realize it or they just don't care. But yeah, if the opponent calls the break there, that would have been a huge win for them. Has Rainier actually played Ark Nova at all, or it's just a suggestion to get him to learn it? He'd be he'd be very good at it. Okay, not punish at all. We get to play animals, and playing three at a time is cool. <laughs> what doesn't he like about it? It's a very good game, and it's actually so many good cards here that he just doesn't want to sell any of them with sunbathing. Uh, but yeah, pouching one is better value. The thing with small animals is, and expert in small animals, is you have so much money, you don't need to sunbathe, you just have money. So pouching is a better use of cards. Uh, Science Museum could see some play here. You get the two research icons from the uni, you get one from Diversity Researcher. So we could see that in the future. Opponent doing some more stuffing around. They already have three workers. You don't need to get your last one that urgently. You can't even donate, so... It is a good idea to spend all your workers before the break, but spending it on two reputation is a waste of a turn, I think. Well, pretty close to a waste of a turn. He just needs to play one game and then it'll be hooked. Don't worry, Gonzo, it'll happen. Yeah, okay, now they play Zoo School. Yes, this gets them a fourth worker. Does it do too much? I don't think it does enough for them. Mm, Ark Nova is very tactical, as opposed to strategic. Okay, so we should note about Yeti's uh, buildings. He's built a size 3 enclosure here. We know it's not for these animals, so we can see that he's eyeing the flamingo. Uh, that would get, get him the fourth European icon with uh, Expert on Europe as well. And that's, that's a pretty big project to support. Playing Expert on Asia... I mean, while it's in the display, why not? The thing is, there's so many sponsors to play here already. But it is good points. Uh, and it's going to give some more pavilions with two Asia animals coming up. So I guess it's fine. It's actually really good points. That was a four-point move. Opponent still not triggering the break, just drawing some cards now at power three. To snap up a... A lizard that doesn't help with any of the projects. Yeah. I said it before, they're stuffing around too much. Hmm. So that's one thing I actually haven't noticed. Well, I haven't actually thought about too much, but how synergized the projects are. Like in this case, there's very little synergy between the three projects because there's no European primates, as we said. Herbivores and primates are pretty different. There are some European herbivores, but for the most part, it doesn't synergize at all. So it makes it harder to support them, and it means that you really want to value these green cards more highly. And as we can see, it snaps up uh, America release. Probably partly for that reason. Getting rid of the Cobra is very sad, though. I guess the thing with the Cobra now is that there's no way we're going to be able to hypnotize the opponent because of the appeal difference, so it, 
it's sort of a blank card. Opponent snaps up a small animal, which I think is smart. But yeah, we can see that the point leads in Yeti's favor now. The opponent just needed better tempo and they would have had a much better game. Like, they're only now just upgrading their last card. I guess the same can be said over here, that Yadi's only now upgrading their last card. But it'll be with a supporting a project instead of a uni. Releasing the Tapir. Yeah, release project's also better on this map because you can trigger the tower multiple times. It is, it is pretty low. I'm off-centered, am I? Don't think that's true at all, but fine. <laughs> I, I really like this move. Uh, because we have all the excess money from all the small animal discounts, you might as well spend the money playing sponsors. I didn't really rate this ability when I was going over all the different maps, but in a situation like this where you just have enough money for the rest of the game, this is a perfect use for it, especially when you already have all these sponsors. Okay, opponent's going to do some pilfering, but it's not that big of a deal, the money is not that important. Playing the Bald Eagle is a good move, though. It might be a tad early for it to be played. It's generally one of those cards that you want to close out the game with. But, I mean, an extra turn, an extra turn is good at all stages of the game. It's just better at the end of the game. Now, this size 4 enclosure must be for the Rhino. It's also probably a bit too late to be building kiosks now, I think. I think just pavilions or nothing in my opinion. And I'd also probably keep sponsors at 5 for them, because without any money they just want the break. Oh yeah, so somehow the Flamingo ended up here. Well, yeah, which is a really good get for him. And yeah, this is instructive. Uh, the opposite of what the opponent did, just holding on to the Sun Bear. So the opponent played the Eagle and sort of blew the the amazing power early, but just saving the Sun Bear for later. Okay, okay, sorry. That was a good reason for the opponent to play the Eagle, which was to release it at max power, so... That was a good move by them in the end. Yeah, this is a good time to play Expert on Europe. Getting four tickets from it. And I really love this. This is one thing about Diversity Researcher on this map. You can now get extra spots on the tower. And yes, they, yes, they trigger. <laughs> Just make sure you don't cover up the tower and you have a lot of extra appeal here. Uh, we just need a size 1 animal to fit in it now, I guess. <laughs> and this as well, like, normally this river is annoying, but stuff that, we just cover the river. Opponent building another size 4. Uh, that means they must have two decently sized playable animals, which is kind of scary. They just don't have money to do it right now. Okay, we're drawing animals one at a time. That's playable. That's not playable, sadly. The bear is playable with the sun bear. That is a deadly combo. If you play these one after the other, as action associate, multiplier associate, while getting an extra worker, that's going to be a very hard game to lose. 
And again, I still... <sighs> yeah, okay. It's, it's a bit late for Tech Institute. Yeah, it gives an X token. And the thing is that the opponent still has workers unspent, so they don't necessarily want to cause the break, but they can have a lot of wasted actions with no money, unless they associate and get the 12 money, I guess, if they have something to associate. Uh, playing Arcade here is kind of interesting. It's going to give some decent income for the break. I also want to point out that there are no kiosks on uh, Yeti's map at all. Even though he's got some lovely kiosk spots here ready for them, like one here, one here. Just hasn't found the time to build kiosks. Talented communicator... Could be pretty good. Yeah, still actually only sitting on one worker. Okay, the opponent spends their workers now to get their third uni. Uh, that gives them end game scoring for Tech Institute and just one CP for covering it. And maybe Science Icons if they need it for something else. Okay, finally the second work is here. The Llama, yeah, um, not much to say, just a decently scoring animal with Meerkat Den. Might as well take the, uh, the Gravy Zebra, as I call it, because there's no point taking the Donkey. Opponent's snapping up the Tarsia. I guess there is good reason to. It's probably the second primate that they want to support this project. Uh, there's also like the ring-tailed lemur there though, but okay, I guess they can't touch rock anymore. I don't know about this move actually. It's a little suspicious use of a size 5 association action. It gets you the uncontested talented communicator. The opponent causes the break. instead of aquatic. Uh, yeah, okay, so the question is, how many projects does Yeti actually have to support? So aquatic could have been a good choice to, to, to just support something else. I guess it's not as important because with the other X, he can also just take the university. I mean, th these, these two showing up here is a bit lucky. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Aquatic there. I think the plan is that... Okay, Herbivore Breeding Program gets snapped up by the opponent. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a waste, but... Oh, yeah, I do like this move as well. Um, that's another cool thing you can do with playing a sponsor. You play the sponsorship elephants before the break, you still get the income from it. And... The income could still make a difference right now. Okay, this was pretty wild to me when I saw this happen, but this is, in my opinion, ultimate greed. Finding time to play the platypus, and this monkey. So yes, they surround the tower, but now you're in a really tricky position if the opponent, like, just rushes. We know they have a Rhino, so they're going to get a lot of points very quickly. But now he's really behind tempo, he needs another size 2 enclosure. He needs to find money to play both of these. Uh, which is going to take some turns to set up. But this is obviously the difference between a top 3 player and a top 50 player. He knows that he has time to do all this. 
Okay, opponent plays Rhino, and what is the other animal that they have? Not actually sure what project they're taking here. It's not going to be species diversity. I, I actually forget what they end up taking. They play a Tamarin. So, questioning what the other size 4 animal is. Uh, I'll call you top 1 when you get to top 1 again. Okay, yep, just building. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm top Australian anymore after today. Uh, okay, it was Habitat, of course. So, yeah, Pony has a good move here. Takes their last partner zoo while getting the fifth Habitat they need. So, I mean, they have made some good moves, and they, they uh, cross now. Wait, do they? Yeah, they don't. So they they could have donated and crossed actually, which I think might have ended up being better for them. It might still not have been enough actually. Yeah. So what Yeti is saying in the chat is, even if he can't uh, get out the the brown bear, he can still play the sun bear no matter what, and then like maybe the dingo as well with his size two enclosure down. You play both of them, and then you're still supporting. Europe at 4, which would probably be enough to win. But yeah, now just getting the money to play the Sun Bear and the, the Brown Bear. Opponent clearly has another project that they want to support. Uh, I don't think you can... Yeah, when you're on 99, you, you don't want to be stuffing around Xing out cards. You just want to be ending the game. So I think they should have just played Animals if they had something to play, or they should have just donated and ended a round earlier. Also, don't know what the hell that move is for. What What's the reasoning of the cards move? No, I'm, I'm interested. So, like, you don't want to cross now because your opponent's going to cross anyway, so you might as well have the extra turn, but Surely playing a sponsor or something is better. You are you just took cards at three. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to be the mistake you're talking about either. Yeah, finishing the game with a herbivore breeding program is is not not the way to end. Pushing the break, sort of tempting the opponent into a break. Interesting. I guess breaks are good for you because you get to play sponsors for free. And now we get to see this amazing last turn. Ah, okay, interesting. So earlier you were saying instead of breaking for 5, you should have break for 7 and then caused the break right there. Yeah, also, cool little move of getting the last uni from only just hitting 5 CP now. And yeah, the opponent must know that it's pretty over. Drawing from the deck just to hit the reptile breeding program, because why not? Mm, yeah, the opponent did telegraph really badly that they wanted to do another association. I don't know why though, this is not a good association move to finish the game with. Like, it doesn't even fill their map. They didn't even play a sponsor with it, they should. They could have just played animals or something. Alright, so first move is going to be Europe. We all saw that coming. And then Reptile Breeding Program, which we... Luckily drew into, I mean, there were, there were options here, so. Actually, were there? Could have supported her before breeding at worst case, so yeah. 
there there was always the um there was also habitat diversity before that which just got pushed out of the way <laughs> I could have done four continent as well yes but you don't want to be a leech well fair enough Yeah, 140 to 123. Massive 113 appeal game. That's the highest I've seen in quite a while. Uh, how do we do for small animals? You need 10 to get all four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect 10 there. Very nice. And some pretty decent endgame points. Yeah, I'm also not sure. Is that is that 113 or is it 1136? Sort of broken the game interface here. Very nice. I, I do love this uh, fully surrounded tower though. That's just style points right there. You can't go above 113. Is that true? Wow, that is true. I didn't even think about that. Did you actually get capped? Did you not get full up, full points from uh, these guys? <laughs> this tower is just overloaded. It's observing too much. <laughs> that is a sick tower, though. I also, I also do love this uh, five enclosure. It's like normally people always complain about the river being in the way, but just building over the top of it. Is it theoretically possible to max both appeal and conservation? I'm sure it is. You just have to have a lot of endgame goals. Because, yeah. If you had like, if you played like four elephants or something, I'm sure you'd hit both. You'd hit max on both with a game plan like this. And yes, you can play four elephants if you release them and play them again. So yeah, I like this game. The opponent had a great start. I think they showed their skill level a bit in the mid game. I think they played the end game reasonably well apart from like the last two turns. Double well yes, double eagle and two times association, yes. If you're if you're getting those things you're gonna max out one of the tracks, if not both. <laughs> but just a lot of end game points would get you close to maxing out CP. So yeah, thank you for sending that game in, Yadi. The opponent was only too underrated, but I think they did play better than their rating. And yes, this was live. Thir uh, 14 minutes versus nearly 30 minutes. Five breaks. And also a pretty long match. 40, 40, 41, 42 turns. But yeah, very, very cool and instructive game. We'll move on to the second game. So again, this is a four-player game from Tomoaki. I am going to sort of skip through what the opponents do because four-player games are going to take a lot longer to get through. But we can see we're on Observation Tower. Everyone's on the same map. But yeah, as Tomoaki said, this is one of his favorite maps. And he doesn't understand all the hate that it gets. So yeah, he sent in this replay uh, as a comment on the last video. He was pretty proud of it. Some unexpected things happen. But I have to say, this is a pretty bonkers starting hand. Uh, side entrance, one of the best sponsors in the game, if not the best. Aquarium also really up there. I'd be keeping both of them 100%. Sun Bear, one of the best animals in the game. I'd probably keep that as well, although it doesn't help out any of these projects. And in four-player games, you really do want to hit one of these. Well, Gonzo, it sounds like you need diversity research and then you don't have to worry about rock or water requirements. Uh, Komodo Dragon, not interesting at all. Breeding program could be interesting in four-player games, actually. I hadn't really considered that, but the two science icons are a bit weird to play, especially with Tomoaki's no university style. Release projects also tempting. 
End goal, sponsor Zoo Climbing Park. I don't think he'd be too happy to see either of those, although he does like to upgrade sponsors a bit. And he's got playable sponsors here. So wow. So this was the this is the first interesting decision. These two are obvious, but keeping both release projects. I guess you double your chance of hitting something that you can release. Like we can release the platypus here. Which is also an aquarium animal, so I mean that's kind of interesting. I'm also wondering how he's gonna get the reputation to play this early, because he does not like taking universities. Hello, Harry. Ah, you saw Tomoaki's Wikipedia. That's that's a very cool resource. Uh, someone remind me to link that after the game. I'll show it on stream. And yes, we're full screen. So yeah, very unexpected. I'm. So he's obviously missed out on the first chance at playing Aquarium, which was the university with two reputation. One of, the, one of the opponents plays Ornithologist, which is very good in four-player games when there's the Birds Project. That's going to give them a lot of money for the game. First action of the game, cards. Is it Platypus Snap? That's, uh, that's what I would be looking at doing. I don't really see what else you would do. So, release pays off. Uh, okay, looking at the CP track, pretty decent rewards for the first person to get 5 and 8. 10 money is good. Partner Zoo is amazing. Okay, one of the opponents building a size 4 enclosure. We'll, uh, we'll look down at their maps in a sec. One of the opponents starting Australia Partner Zoo. Uh, could indicate that they're rushing for 5 habitats, Australia being one of the harder habitats to get. Size 2 enclosure over the reputation would be the biggest indicator that he wants to... No, okay, I'm being silly. He wants to play the platypus and then release it, and that gets him 3 reputation. So we don't even have to worry about that. What he really wants is the break not being triggered. Uh, so that would make him kind of happy, the opponent snapping up a sponsor. It means that Blue is not going to use 5 sponsors to trigger a break. It's a very cool wiki. I will I will show it after this game. I've been looking at all the uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak things as well. Very useful. Yeah, not just Ark Nova stuff. I think side entrance on this map is very good because you have an amazing spot here for it where it can touch five different buildings. Not that you like really want to build up here, but just just being able to touch five different things is really strong. So kind of an awkward position, um, no one, okay, red could really cause a break if they want to, but they're not incentivized to, but having, was it yellow? Yellow didn't play a sponsor, which means they rushed the break. That's not something that he'd be very happy to see, because he still wants to play animals and release it before the break happens. Yeah, this position right here, or, or this right here, you just have all the different buildings touching it. And we're going to see, I've watched a bit of this game, uh, really cool aquarium placement as well with the side entrance. Okay, Red uses their worker. So Tomowaki is the only person that hasn't spent their worker. And now the break is so dangerously close. This is where you really have to read your opponents. Because, like, I would be so tempted to just grab a partner who and not waste the worker. But he goes ahead and plays the platypus. Uh, doesn't venom anyone. So I guess the other thing is you can see that the opponents all want to play animals. The animals are at five. Uh, they all have enclosures built. This one down here is very sad, not touching the tower. Yeah, so they all probably want to play animals before the break. Which is a good read by him. That, that's a useful skill in four-player games. You can see Ornithologist already getting some money. Blue, blue actually very close to upgrading a card already.
Okay, red building a petting zoo before playing animals. Okay, sure. Yellow doing the same, so neither of them want a break. Uh, it's just blue that might cause a break now, which would... If blue does cause a break, that would hurt red and yellow quite a bit. We know that blue has geologists, though. Okay, here's the Australia release. And this was the next surprise. Uh, first power snapping when cards is about to hit five. I... So one of the things with side entrance is you are going to get a lot of money. And I don't think you necessarily need the second worker when there's about to be a break. But snapping is was unexpected for me. Like I think building uh, upgrading build is obviously really good. He's just seen the turtle and how it supports three different projects and thought it's too good not to prioritize. Blue triggers the break here. Okay, we have a wolf. I mean, if I'm Tomowaki, I'm snapping up the wolf and looking to release it. I actually can't believe he doesn't do this. He snaps up the grabby monkey instead. Grabby monkey, I, uh, I don't even know why. Because it doesn't help with any of these projects, and it's not like he's leading an appeal either. I, I rate the card very highly. I don't know how good it is in four-player games, though. I'll, uh, I'll link... Okay, we'll find the wiki. Oh god, everything's in French, though. I've got to navigate everything in French. So, in the last replay analysis, you can see this is actually Tomowaki that's replied. Uh, it's one of these comments. This here. Yes, leave YouTube. So yes, it all looks very scary in Japanese. Uh, but the thing for auto-translating should be coming up right now. Maybe it's in Chrome that it auto-translates. Anyway, if you can find an auto-translator, it's good. Hopefully that link works and didn't just kill everything. But yeah, that is that is the wiki that Tomoaki linked me to. Which is very cool. All in Japanese, but if you can translate it, very good. Back to the game. Back to full screen. Red finally playing the animals. They have two pettings of animals. Which is fine. It's not helping with any of these projects, but it is some useful appeal early. There's a third petting zoo animal there. Yellow's playing animals. Frilled neck lizard. Well, helps with reptiles, obviously. Um, that is one thing I don't really like about taking the Australia partner to. It's when you're going to play the animal anyway. It saves three money, but so what? I think you'd rather just take a different partner zoo and rush the habitats faster. I think most people would prefer Silver Lake over Observation Tower. I think if you ask any of the other top players, it would be a, like a no-brainer. Okay, Yellow plays Thorny Devil as well, so it makes more sense to save six money, but... Yeah, okay, and this gets them reptiles. Okay, I don't mind it as much. Okay, cards. Please tell me you're snapping up the wolf. Nope. Uh, so, okay, Adventure Playground. Decent because of Climbing Park and Sponsor Zoo. And because it touches the side entrance here. But still, this wolf is just really good value. I'm, I'm kind of surprised he's not prioritizing it more. Blue taking their second university. 
That is true. You can be successful with a lot of different strategies. And the good thing about Arena is everyone's playing with the same maps anyway, so map strength isn't really a discussion that needs to be had as much. But that might change if the Arena settings change. Which I hope they don't, personally. Okay, building time. Uh, this is some interesting decisions. So we obviously want to build a kiosk and pavilion around side entrance. I really love this positioning. So if we look here, we can see that the adventure playground fits in here, touching side entrance and the kiosk. We can see that aquarium fits around here, touching side entrance and the kiosk, not doubling up on any of the spaces. And then size three enclosure, only touching the tower once for this turtle tortoise. How's the income looking? Well, after Aquarium gets played, the income's going to be insanely high compared to everyone else. Red taking their uni. Tomowaki still hasn't spent their work yet. He's the only one. Uh, opponents could be looking at triggering the break, which would be a little bit awkward. This is one of the things you have to navigate around in... Uh, four-player games more often, just how quickly the break can come. But obviously believes that red and yellow have sponsors that they want to be playing. Yeah, love this aquarium placement. Draws from the deck because neither of these are particularly useful. Blue finally plays their Geologist right before they build, which makes a lot of sense. Red just playing animals at three, which is a little weird. Uh, no, it makes sense if it's the third petting zoo animal. You want to get that played before the break, because that gives a lot of income. Also using, also using the dig ability. Yeah, 20 income... It's a lot higher than everyone else. And this is before... Well, okay, you can't play the turtle yet. But yeah, and then once Adventure Playground gets played as well, a lot more income. You can even fit another kiosk over here. So just... This, this is why side entrance is so good on this map. Just so much space around it. Okay, we can see that he still doesn't... Like taking unis, well obviously no need to take the two science uni. But this makes sense to play Grabby Monkey. Uh, yeah, I oh, could actually even play that next move. And no reason that he wouldn't. Blue is just building. Red pushing the break forward. Does yellow do the same? Yellow drawing cards first. That makes sense. They have no cards in hand. Okay. Who's getting targeted? So uh, red or yellow can be targeted. Huh. I'd, I guess I'd target yellow because red's... Already got their scoring petting zoo animals down. Yellow's pretty close to the reptiles project and Africa, so I think they're more dangerous. So yeah, they do correctly target yellow, I think. We do see big nose here again. Uh, is it going to be taken? I can't guarantee it this game. But he has played the first primate, so I mean... We're never saying never. Blue gets to play animals before the break. And they snap up the tortoise, which is... Yeah, decent card. It's a reptile. It's also just a very high-scoring animal, so... You want to get those when you can. The wolf is still sitting here. I'm getting a little worried it's going to disappear. And it's not like Tom Waiki can hold that many cards in hand either. Yellow also not wanting to trigger the break. They want to build before they trigger the break. <laughs> but 
the primate clock is ticking. Yeah, this is also really good. Uh, being able to play Adventure Playground before the break, so it touches side entrance and the kiosk and gives more appeal and lets him clever down cards. And now if he actually gets to build again, his income is going to be higher than 28, which is basically double everyone else. Not quite, but nearly. Yeah, you can see blue immediately triggers the break after. It's a, it's a bit lucky that he's being able to do all this before the break. It's also the opponents being lower level, although... I think as I pointed out last week, he seems to only play against people rated 200 or higher. But yeah, no one really wants to trigger the break in 4 player games, and I understand why, but I don't think it's that bad. And please tell me we're snapping up the wolf. Um... Hmm. Can't really think of a reason. I guess the only reason that comes to mind is you think you're about to get the wolf anyway from your build action, and then this is a European icon for habitat diversity after the wolf gets released. Okay. Red playing animals at three is very suspicious, especially if they're playing a secretary bird. That would tell us that they... Uh, probably going to release it immediately. Unless they have something else going on. I mean, they could support birds at two, but Secretary Bird is one of those birds that you want to release. Ideally. How the... So everyone's only got one upgrade. Blue has two upgrades. I don't think you should consider it mean to, to cause the break. I think it's actually, there's too many people that don't want to cause the break. Being that guy to cause the break is actually good. People should view, view you as a hero. Blue snaps up Science Library. It's a good card. I think it's mu a much better card in the first round. I think it loses a lot of power from like the second or third round onwards. It's still going to give decent return. I just don't know if it's snappable worthy. I've played a few four-player games in real life. I think one or two. But generally, people want the break in those games. They're like, oh, why aren't you causing the break? <laughs> More than like, why are you causing it? Okay, we can see the wolf gets played. Uh, good timing, it's about to be released. Yeah, everyone wants the break, because that's when you get all your money. All your money and workers back, you can have fun for the next round. Uh, Red was the one with the secretary birds, so they are just supporting birds at two. Uh, they still might release it later. I think... If you were going to do it, you'd want to release it now to get the 5 CP reward first. <laughs> I'll use that one who doesn't love coffee. I actually don't like coffee. I don't drink coffee at all. <laughs> and very nice here. This is a huge part of 4 player games as well. Getting these rewards first gets both of them in one go. That's why I was kind of surprised he didn't snap up the wolf early, because it's really important to his game plan. And that is to get a free partner zoo here and 10 money. I mean, those are huge boosts to his game. Australia suggests to me that now he's all in on habitat diversity, and he's got all the habitats in hand, so that was the reason for the porcupine. He's got Europe, Asia, Africa all ready to go. Upgrading Associate, we're not surprised by, because we know that he upgrades it in every single game he plays. Um, I still would have been tempted to upgrade Animals just to hit 5 Reputation, I guess. Okay, Blue plays their Science Library. It's some points, it's some money. 
they have pretty good sponsor cards. Uh, they're making full use out of expert in large animals. Red plays expert in Asia. So how close is everyone else to habitats? Yellow is the closest. They need Americas and Europe. Red and blue are a bit far away. I guess they're all at two, like Tomoaki is. Uh, so the, the other thing about upgrading Associate is it'll allow him to get a third partner zoo, which is going to help with habitats. Probably could look at taking Africa just because the tortoise is a bit expensive to play right now. Building a size 1 for the porcupine and a size 2 for the hornbill. That would also suggest that he's going to get the Africa partner zoo if it's available. I do wonder what the next move is. Is he going to just uh, break five with with a worker in hand? Blue building. Um, we can see that red's pretty close on points, but Tomoaki just has a, still a huge income lead and and money and a and a point lead over everyone. So I don't think the game's going to last too much longer. Especially if he gets five habitats first, it'll be over in 10 moves, maybe? 11 moves, something like that. Okay, yellow grabbing a... Yellow grabbing their first uni, and it's the two science ones. Uh, always suspicious to see. What does that tell us? means they might have the tamarind or something for their America icons, so they are getting very close to habitats. Uh, it means they might also have a, like one of the boa constrictors or something for a fourth reptile. That's an option as well, which was also America. And they upgrade sponsors. Oh, that's a little unexpected move. Okay, a little bit weird on the ordering there. Just betting a worker to get two reputation. To, to then upgrade animals. I would have liked the third partner zoo personally. And the thing is, you don't actually get any points for getting a fourth worker, so... So, so maybe that does mean he's only going to stay at two partner zoos. Yeah, I think, well, with side entrance, you can afford to donate a bit more aggressively because you've just got so much more money than everyone else at the table. Uh, even affording to play animals before the break just to get more income... Just digging away African animals. Digging away Big Nose. Keep the scoring cards away from everyone, even though no one has primates. That might have been just so he didn't get tempted to take it. Just, just get rid of that temptation. He's got other things to do, like go for Habitat 5. Don't need to be distracted by Big Nose. Um, yeah, this is what I don't like players doing in four player games, like a build two action when you have no money and you really want a break doesn't, doesn't make sense tactically for me. Uh, although it seems like they built it over a reputation spot to upgrade sponsors. So maybe I'm being a little harsh. Okay. Yellow plays the Taipan, which does require a science symbol. Gets them to four reptiles, but yeah, they're not threatening habitats now. It seems like Tomwaki is going to get away with this. 
Uh, I think while everyone is venomed, people are more inclined to take a break. So I think just encouraging them to take a break is smart. Hmm. Well, this one, this game, I was really surprised by the starting with both release projects, but they both paid off big time. Getting the wolf there was a little bit lucky, but. In a game like that, I probably wouldn't have kept one of these, and I would have been punished. Because, yeah, I was looking at keeping the sun bear, and where would the sun bear get us right now? It would give us an extra action, but not really helpful on any, any of these projects. Okay, are we looking at anything to snap up here? Don't need help with habitats. He won't be tempted by Tech Institute. Maybe this Hydrologist. It's some points. It's a sponsor to play. I'm curious. Hydrologist it is. It won't necessarily be a shield at the end unless this spot gets connected to. Okay, yellow taking cards, snapping up the hippo. Yeah, there's a bit of competition for five, Af five Africa here. Drawing from the deck I like. Koala is very playable. Um, hey look, there's a perfect spot for it. So, I mean, how close are we to ending the game? Can play both of these right now, then associate five habitats. That's already getting there. Blue taking a third uni. All right, that gets them another card upgrade because they just hit two CP. You can see no one else has hit five or eight yet. And yeah, this just looks like another no university game. No 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 reason to get a university now. You might as well just end the game with only three card upgrades. So now I'm curious to, to see a game where he actually does upgrade four cards. It would have to be when there's a university on one of these rewards. Yep, playing animals before associating for five habitats. The reputation doesn't particularly matter. Getting rid of climbing parks makes sense. Yeah, so that's a good reason to not sell Engineer. I was wondering if he was going to sell Engineer or not. Actually choosing not to play the Koala. I guess there's not really a rush to. So not playing the koala now allows him to donate again. What did blue just play? Tech Institute. It makes sense for blue. Blue might have research too or something going on. Migration recording would have been a lot more useful in the opening hand. Okay, red just drawing everything from the deck. Red really needs... They need to hit something, I'm not sure what, but they're not happy with, with what they have. Yellow just needs a bit more money, it seems. Taking size 2. True. Waiting to play the koala to pouch as well. That does make sense. Yeah, and, and doubling that up with the fact that he wants to donate still. Make donations expensive for everyone else. The size 2 enclosure I find a little bit odd. I would have been tempted by playing a sponsor. Uh, especially since he has kept sponsor zoo. 
would have also been tempted by like 12 instant money or something. The sea lion is tempting, I guess. It's okay value. I'm not super tempted to go out of my way to play it. The effect is not going to be too useful. It, I mean, yeah, the thing is it does fit here nicely. I guess with migration recording you could release the sea lion because it, it allows you to release from the same project more than once, so that could be a temptation. Ah, oh, true, there's aquarium as well. I did forget about our friend the aquarium, It's so it's it's some extra value, it's not the worst. No, I think releasing sea lion is a very, very viable option here. Especially with migration recording, it's a good animal to release. But yes, it might be a bit slow snapping up this and then... Yeah, so that's another thing. Snap and, pl and playing sponsors seem to combo really well together. I'm, I'm still very surprised by the size too. Yellow playing sponsors, they cause the break. Yeah, imagine having playing sponsors right now. Also, uh, what is this spot telling us? I don't really know. I'd be more tempted to build, try to connect to this water spot for Hydrologist. But I guess this is also open for a big animal later if it comes. Is this going to be for the, the Ibex, which just happens to perfectly fit in there? Is that going to be snapped up? No. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the uh, extra water makes sense. Doesn't seem to care about Hydrologist. And the game's not going to last for too much longer. Also didn't care about... Okay, Migration Recording's a bit hard to play because of no science. Mm, you can definitely stretch yourself too thin in in four player games. We can see the sea lion is played. It doesn't seem that much okay. I guess the thing about the koala is he doesn't care about the reputation at all, so it's actually a lot worse than most people would would value it at, just because the reputation isn't going to be useful. Uh, he's probably also a bit sad that he got rid of Climbing Park, because the Ibex and the Koti and the Koala would have really helped with that. Okay, Blue playing a big animal, that's going to help their game a lot. Dugong. Everyone's still sitting under 5 CP, it's really not how the game should be played. You can see he's at 77 points with money to burn, compared to everyone else sitting at 30. So he's just completely focused on just getting points, getting money, winning the game, not worrying about the fourth upgrade. You can see red has all, the, all their upgrades. Yellow only has two. What has yellow been doing? Yellow's down here. Yeah, see, it's too late for yellow now to get a second university. Oh, and yellow's sitting at two reputation. Oh. Red building a big enclosure. Yeah. Four play games do last about... I don't have the stats, but from the top player stats, roughly two or three turns faster on average. Well, compared to comparing Tomowaki's stats against everyone else. Okay, that looks like a spot for the Koala. Pavilion, because it's an extra point. Yeah, don't need to build a size 1 enclosure now. We have all the spots we need. Yeah, I think... This is probably not the time to be playing a polar bear exhibit. You can see the game is going to end in maybe 2 or 3 more turns, I would say. Uh, what can he support, actually? 
<clears throat> Not much. Okay, red just getting a lot more money. Yellow building. Ah, I did also... That's a really good point. Uh, he does really rate the clever ability, and that's just a part I completely missed about taking the snake as well. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's also going to be the second reptile he needs, actually, so... Doubly good. Two reptiles to support it at two. Uh, and that should be enough to... To get 100 points, I think. Koala, Pouching, and Snake with Aquarium. Maybe he needs to play Hy Hydrologist as well. Okay, Red supporting... Red supporting Africa at two. Yellow playing Breeding Corporation to get Africa five. Okay, fair enough. Right here's animals. Okay, we can play hydrologist for free. We don't even need the sponsor action. Okay, polar bear exhibit actually gives some points. Oh yeah, this is definitely game over next next turn. Uh, you might as well clever down sponsors just in case of constriction or something. I mean, if anyone's going to be targeted, it's going to be him. He's ahead on appeal by 30. Drawing cards is the last action you want to be doing right now when you have an opponent at 97 points. Okay, there's Africa 5. That'll probably be enough to get yellow second place. And very, very well calculated with the amount of money left as well. Reptiles at two, perfect amount to play hydrologist. I still would have liked these uh, size 2 enclosures to touch this water, but it's a small detail. Yeah, Hydrologist for 7 points. That's that's a nice final move. Well, with, with the supporting a project as well. Okay, Blue just playing animals. Uh, okay. They actually get all their three, polar, their three bears, so... I can't criticize them for playing Polar Bear Exhibit. And Tortoise is a very nice animal to finish the game with. That's true. Any move is good when you have a 60 point lead, but I think that's a particularly nice way to finish the game. Um, is that red playing Science Lab? Well, that's a bit dicey. Where's Red? Surely Red would rather play an animal than play a science lab. They must really have nothing. They drew so many cards, and now they're spending their last action playing a science lab for no points. So Red red was pretty sad that game, I think. Is that Polar Bear Exhibit giving more points to Blue? Wow, I was completely wrong. Yeah, Yellow just playing some animals, so... Blue might actually get second. But yeah, look at look at the point difference. This is just this is just commitment to scoring points. Blue has some nice end game points. Red has none. Ooh, yellow with naturalist zoo. Very 
Very nice. Well, that's a naturalist zoo. They did a good job not filling their zoo. Um, but it's possible they got baited too much by it because they didn't score many points. But I mean, they were the... They did actually focus on projects. They just didn't get a chance to support reptiles, which is a huge mistake. They got their Africa. They were just... Oh, there were like a couple of X tokens short of supporting the reptiles at five. Yeah, let's look at some stats for this game. Let's look at... The end game scoring was Sponsor Zoo, which did basically nothing. But it didn't matter, because he ended the game in how many turns? 26 turns, and that was with him being last player, so everyone else got 27 turns. If this was a two-player game, that's insanely fast. Um, still pretty fast for four-player, only four breaks. But yeah, that was helped by side entrance giving just insane income. Yeah, I think... In four-player games, I've seen 25 turns. I'm not sure you can get much faster than that. Yeah, side entrance, partner zoos, income, don't worry about universities, don't worry about reputation, get money, play animals, support projects. Getting Habitats 5 was a lucky break for him. But also just keeping those release projects at the start, I really liked. It it paid off big time. And yeah, we can see this was a turn-based game. <laughs> yeah, very nicely played. And that is the power of Observation Tower, you just get so many so much more appeal than usual that you can rush the game a lot easier than a lot of other maps and the extra appeal gives you income early um let's look at a few more stats x token instead of action at zero noticed he likes to do that um cards actions down at four sponsors at four but the important actions like associate animals these are the two actions that you want to be doing the most. If you're spending half your turns playing animals or associating, you're in for a good game. 13 out of 26. Wait, what kind of maths is this? 13, 17, 21. Oh yeah, it works out. 26. Money gained through income nearly double everyone else, but that's just side entrance being side entrance. Snapped card seven times. Um, oh yeah, that's right. He took the snapping ability first, which I thought was really odd, but he was right that he didn't need the income. And yeah, being able to snap that many cards means he didn't have to take the cards action that many times. He didn't need it. So that's something I'll keep in mind for my four-player games. Snapping probably more valuable than normal. But that's okay. That's also because of side entrance giving uh, insane income. Hmm. How many workers did he end the game with? I think only two. I think I'm right in saying only two. That's the thing. You you have less cycles of your actions, so extra workers aren't necessarily going to do anything if there are just break after break. And especially on this map when there's no CP reward for getting a fourth worker. But yeah, very cool game. Uh, that's all we're going to look at today. We'll be back uh, for regular board game play stream on Sunday, two days from now. If anyone has any cool replays for me to go over in Ark Nova, feel free to send them to me on Board Game Arena, just not in YouTube comments because it'll get auto-blocked. But yeah, feel free to send me some links on in uh, Board Game Arena. 
it's my turn here. I'll, I'll get to these after the stream. <laughs> my replay versus BDW is never going to see the light of day. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for watching and have a good rest of the day. See you next time.